Hello everybody and welcome back to KSP Realistic Space Program with Cerberus. Welcome also to a little bit of enhanced production quality thanks to this brand new lovely microphone into which I'm speaking making my voice sound all the more deep and handsome I'm sure for everybody at the very least a, a lot more palatable I hope the easier to listen to for more than 30 seconds at a time I've uh, splurged a little bit on uh, on a nice new studio quality microphone but not nothing outrageous it's um, it's a uh, it's from blue microphones it's called the snowball it's uh, it's a very good very good for people kind of in my situation you know uh, wanting to get into a little bit of YouTube commentary that kind of thing uh, it's not a huge drain on the wallet it cost me to actually get it shipped from the US to Canada where I'm at and even including the duty I had to pay I think it set me back about 90 bucks Canadian of course so that's where that's coming from um, also in the in the news for the realistic space program as it were it might not actually be the realistic space program anymore actually well it's not going to be um, the content's going to be the same, but uh, between the having between reinstalling all of my mods, updating mods, a bunch of the core mods that I was using uh, saw updates almost right after I started. <clears throat> so with a bit of a pause there to let all those get back up to date, uh, even testing a few of them myself to kind of help it along, uh, as well as a little bit of time spent having to reconfigure some of those new things to work with each other to get the solar system to get the game universe as it were for my playthrough all set up nicely like I had it um, there still haven't really been any real videos of substance I still haven't actually live recorded as it were uh, any rocket flights so I made the decision to uh, do this now while the series is still fresh and doesn't really have a whole lot of episodes in it to just reboot it entirely and start over fresh uh, with a new title and everything and uh, you'll uh, you'll see that at the end of this video what that's what that's going to be uh, other than that I just wanted to show you a few other changes to look forward to some some additions that I've made and enhancements into the real solar system mod now there have been added a bunch of extra new launch sites um, and I think there's even more on the way there are more in it than I even have now and I'm going to be adding those before I start doing some uh, some real work on the series but you can see all the red dots here is where there are launch sites added into real solar system and into which I have added ground-based radio antennas for use with the remote tech mod which is the mod where I'm going to have to have communication satellites set up in order to let any far-reaching space probes and that kind of thing uh, be able to talk to mission control at back home on earth and send the transmit the science home and all any of that kind of thing so there's there's a bunch and there's going to be a bunch more there's a few extra ones in the US you know most notably on the West Coast there's uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base the Kodiak Space Launch Center up in Alaska I think I'm going to have a few in Asia you know Japan China possibly even Korea there may be one in Australia on the way uh, India has one here the uh, the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan which the Russians use then the Plesetsk Cosmodrome, which is actually in Russia. There's one in Britain here, which I think actually was a rocket test facility for some time. I don't think it saw a whole lot of action as a space launch center, but it's in there as part of the uh, Reaching for the Stars mod that I have, which for my purposes is going to give me a whole bunch of rocket engines and that kind of thing which are realistic but not real life clones and there's a whole alternate history background to that mod and that's where this particular launch site comes from here in Britain there's one here in Algeria which is an old French rocket launch site from back when Algeria was a French colony there's another fictional one here uh, on the island of Pemba in Tanzania and then 
the other real notable one would be the Centre Spatial Guyanais in or just outside Kuhu in French Guyana, which is the European Space Agency's, I would say, primary launch facility. One other thing that I wanted to show in this episode, mainly because it's been updated again and has a nice pretty new layout, and also because it's almost tradition now after having given a snapshot of the tech tree in the first episode, and then in the episode 1.5 that I did, well, here's the tech tree that I'm going to be working with, and this time it's much more like... In fact, you probably won't see it change very much, other than the fact that I'm going to be unlocking it as we go. This is the whole thing. Uh, version 19b, Milestone 19b, of the Realistic Progression Light Tree by Medieval Nerd. Uh, as I've said before, it is built largely for uh, the Real Solar System Realism Overhaul sort of suite of mods. Though it also does allow, it integrates in fact, uh, basically, as far as I know, full support for KSP Interstellar, which is another fantastic mod that I love, and it's great to see it in here. It's also what's going to enable me to go uh, from sounding rockets all the way to warp drive, as I've mentioned. That's the idea. The uh, I'm going to go all the way. You can see all sorts of KSPI goodies, nuclear generators, plasma engines, fusion power, antimatter, all sorts of really, really fun stuff, which lets you build some really, really interesting ships and... Uh, go to all sorts of places, even with this real scale solar system. We're going we're gonna to need some of that stuff to go to some of the farther places, especially with manned missions later on. You can also see such mods as Infernal Robotics, um, Kerbal Attachment System up near the top left. Uh, it's great if you haven't tried it before. It essentially allows you to build things in flight. You can attach struts to things, you can attach anything you can actually manageably carry around on a Kerbal's back, because that's how it works. He sort of slings it over his back and runs around with it, or floats around in space with a strut or whatever. Uh, ECLSS and TAC are life support systems. I'm going to be using TAC life support. Never tried ECLSS, but I like TAC, so that's why. Uh, and then, of course, FASA and a whole bunch of other probes specifically tailored to going to certain places. Probes just to go to Mars and to make Mars-specific science studies, Venus and the Moon, all sorts of stuff like that, just to add a little more realism, because that's kind of how we build probes. We purpose-build them. We don't just have a generic probe core that we slap a gravi gravimeter onto and uh, go to whatever planet we want, like in the stock KSP. All in the name of more realism, basically. Um, of course, as I get later on in the tech tree, we're going to graduate from things that are realistic into things that are not real but plausible, and perhaps then to things that might actually never happen, but are still in some way, I guess, scientifically feasible. Uh, we hope, at least. Like, you know, the most extreme example, of course, being the warp drive stuff. But yeah, there it is. Take a good look. You're going to be seeing a lot more of it gradually as uh, as more of it becomes visible in my career mode. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to showing you guys this adventure as I, uh, as I partake of it. All right, well, that is just about going to do it for me for this episode, this final episode, in some sense, of the KSP Realistic Space Program series, as the next time you see a video in this series, it's going to be the same content. I mean, I'm still intending to do all of the things that I was initially setting out to do, just under a different name, with maybe a bit of a new face, and you will be seeing that on or before Monday. I have a few last tweaks to make to the setup that I've got, and I will be ready to go. I'll be making that over the weekend, and like I said, you'll be seeing that Monday at the latest, the 5th of May. So, until then, it's been fun, and I will see you guys next time in the first episode of...